What is this piece of clay? Could you tell me a little bit about it? Well, I think you have something very unusual there. Don't know how you came by it, but it appears to be an early representation of the god Humbaba. Who exactly is Humbaba? Well, it's extraordinary. Humbaba was called the uh, Lord of the Labyrinth, the Lord of the Intestines. It goes back, you know, to Sumeria. And what does the mask of Humbaba represent? Scholars can't agree uh, what the mask of Humbaba represents. So, uh, starting from the uh, uh, most basic school of uh, scholarship, uh, it's believed that Humbaba stands for the planet Mercury. Uh, then he's also called the god of intestines, because as you can see, it looks like the human intestines there. And the intestines are also the sign of the labyrinth. So what does this labyrinth represent? There are many, many theories, of course. Uh, people have many different ideas. Uh, some say uh, that the intestines represent fate. Uh, you know, there were sacrifices and animals were killed and then the intestines were read for signs of what would happen in the future. Are there any labyrinths around today? Can you be aware of your own labyrinth? But if you're talking about things outside of yourself, well, perhaps you could go to the famous labyrinth at Chartres. Uh, they're in the courtyards of many uh, cathedrals in Europe. And uh, there seems to be a, a revival of labyrinth making. Uh, there's a church in New Jersey that's making a labyrinth. And uh, look outside the film building on 17th Street. Somebody has chalked a labyrinth on the sidewalk. Who is Gilgamesh? Your questions take us into such deep water. Of course, Gilgamesh is the first story of mankind. It's got everything in it. The king who was sort of a Prince Hal, a very dissolute king, uh, who was punished by the gods and then went on a quest for immortality and almost succeeded in becoming immortal, uh, but then it was snatched from him at the very end and then he remained immortal, but he gained wisdom. So that's kind of the story of Gilgamesh. Um, this piece is inextricably woven in with that tale. And who is Shamash? The Egyptian wing of the Metropolitan Museum on Fifth Avenue here in New York has an extraordinary series of uh, wall paintings and uh, carvings from the dynastic periods of Egypt, from the uh, two dynasty period, and almost Every stella, almost every carving, has a representation of the sun. Shamash, mm -hmm. the god of the sun. Mm -hmm. Who is Ishtar? Well, Ishtar was known as Venus among the Greeks, the goddess of love, a little bit fickle perhaps, very attractive, perhaps something like you. And uh, she's also a star in the sky, one of the planets, a fickle planet up and down all the time. And in the legend of Gilgamesh, Ishtar uh, plays some mean tricks on Gilgamesh, as women often do in this, in this kind of situation.